Hey everyone, Ash here with an update on the Nintendo Switch. Um, now, this is actually a little bit different than from what you might be expecting. Uh, this isn't a news update in the strictest sense. This is actually um, just my most recent hands-on impressions from all the time I've really gotten to spend playing the Switch. The reason we're doing this is because some pictures I took of, this, of a Switch development unit at Yacht Club Games uh, for the interview that we recently published about Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment have been making the rounds on the internet. We've been seeing them pop up on Gaff and on Twitter and various other places. So because these images that I took of the Switch development unit are gaining so much traction, we thought it would be a good idea for me to just record a new update and just kind of uh, summarize my thoughts on the Switch so far in terms of all the time I've spent playing it, because at this point I've gotten quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of time actually getting to hold the Switch and play the Switch myself. So um, some of this information, if you've been re uh, watching our interviews and, and such, you might have heard this before, but I'm just going to summarize that and maybe get some new stuff in there and uh, just kind of share my thoughts with you guys. So, the first thing I want to point out about the Switch uh, when you're playing it is really just how light it is and, and how thin it is in your hands. I mean, we're going from, you know, the Wii U gamepad, which really, at this point, looks like a chunky Fisher-Price toy almost, which is kind of crazy, but we're going from the Wii U gamepad, which is this chunky tablet controller, to the Nintendo Switch, which is so much thinner and, and lighter. And actually, when I first recorded these impressions, um, Nintendo hadn't revealed official sp uh, specification for the Switch, so I had to guess whether the, just kind of feel by weight, whether the Switch was actually heavier or lighter than the Wii U gamepad. I can actually confirm now that the Wii, the Switch with the Joy-Cons attached is 398 grams, so it's just under 400 grams, and that's actually lighter, uh, quite a bit lighter than the Wii U gamepad, and a little heavier than, than the new 3DS XL. So, you know, if you have either of those pieces of hardware, that can kind of give you you know, give you a rough idea of where the Switch is going to fall weight-wise. But I can tell you right now, I mean, just holding it with both hands and playing it, it never felt too heavy. It's very light. It's very thin. But it's not so light and thin that it felt flimsy. Like, I want to make it very clear, the, the Switch does not feel like a flimsy piece of hardware. The, the, you know, the, it doesn't shake where the Joy-Cons attach to the main Switch console. You know, there there's it's very seamless. Even where the... Even though you can obviously see where the Joy-Cons attach to the Switch, they don't feel like they wobble or like they're not connected well enough. Like everything, it, it, the whole thing feels like one very cohesive console. So I definitely want to make that clear. Um, so really, I just think it's it's super impressive that the Switch is both thinner and lighter than the Wii U gamepad, but that's like the whole console within the Switch. The gamepad was a controller. The, the Switch console is the console, and yet it's, you know, lighter than the Wii U gamepad. So... Uh, pretty cool. I, I've, I've said this before, but from an engineering standpoint, the, the Switch has really impressed me. Like, once you really get your hands on it and you see all the different ways you can configure the Switch and, and use the Joy-Cons, it's really impressive. And actually, moving on to the Joy-Cons, they're so cool. I love the fact that you can, I mean, obviously, the Switch comes with two controllers. I mean, you know, both Joy-Cons, the L and the R, are, can be their own controller. And so when I was at Yacht Club, to uh, take the Switch version of Shovel Knight for a spin, uh, for co-op actually. Uh, it was funny, the, the guys at Yacht Club were setting up co-op for me, and I, you know, I'm just sitting there like an idiot, like waiting to be handed another controller, and they're just looking at me like, hey, so can I have a Joy-Con? And I'm like, oh wait, that's right, like I actually do have two controllers right here with me, then they're both connected to the Switch. So it's definitely a concept that you won't be used to until you start using the Switch for yourself. Like, I was just sitting there not even realizing, oh yeah, I have these two controllers connected to the Switch and I just gotta hand one off to the other guy and we're gonna play. So, that that kind of that proof of concept moment where like that light, that light bulb goes on and you're like, whoa, wait, I'm holding this Switch and these controllers are already attached and I can just hand one off to my friend here. It's really cool. They're also very easy to disconnect from the Switch itself. I mean, there's gonna be a slight learning curve in terms of how you want to hold the Switch when you're disconnecting the Joy-Cons. For me, I seem to have found that the best method seems to be holding the Switch around the screen to kind of give it some leverage as you disconnect the Joy-Cons. There's basically like a small button in the back that you have to push in as you slide out the Joy-Con. And it's it probably sounds a little more complicated than it is. It's very easy to do. Um, I never once felt like I was going to drop the Switch while disconnecting or reconnecting the, the Joy-Cons, but there is going to be a slight learning curve in, in terms of how, of how best to hold the Switch when you're disconnecting the Joy-Cons. But one thing that's really cool uh, that I didn't previously realize about the Switch until I played it at Yacht Club Games was that there's actually a little sound effect built into the UI or built into the system by Nintendo that um, plays when you connect the Joy-Cons. So not only is there this really satisfying click 
that you get physically that you can hear, you know, uh, in the hardware uh, when you connect the Joy-Cons to the to the Switch, but there's actually a little sound that plays out of the Switch itself that's like a little click too. So it's 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 a very Nintendo thing to include. It's 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 a very Nintendo thing at, to begin with, but it's just kind of a cool. It, it kind of drives home that message that the Switch is really all about, you know, connecting and disconnecting those controllers and really playing however you want. And man, that sw that that little click is so, it's so, it's just really satisfying. It, it kind of in the same way that popping or popping bubble wrap is satisfying, if that makes any sense. So, but yeah, the Joy Cons are great. I do want to stress, however, the Joy Cons they're a mixed bag. Um, I do love them. I love playing with the Joy Cons in tabletop mode. They're very very well-engineered, well-designed controllers. I did mention uh, in my preview, or at least my impressions from the New York hands-on event, that I got to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe holding the Joy-Con sideways, and despite the fact that the Joy-Con is so small, it's even smaller than the, than the uh, Wii Remote held sideways, it felt fine in my hands, and I have pretty big hands, so I don't think those of you with big hands are going to have a problem holding the, uh, the Joy-Con sideways. However, there is a big caveat to the Joy-Cons, and I found that out while playing Shovel Knight, and that is that that 2D games suck with the Joy-Con. I'm not even going to lie to you. The fact that there's no D-pad on these Joy-Cons is a real deal breaker for me in terms of 2D games. Like, I was trying to play Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment and Shovel Knight Co-op with the Joy-Con held sideways, and it's just, you know, the, the, the four separated buttons just absolutely cannot compare to a real D-pad. So... In the future, if if Nintendo were to release a variant of the Joy-Con that, in, like the Joy-Con L, that included a D-pad, I would buy that sight unseen because, frankly, I do not want to play 2D games with the Joy-Con held sideways. And I mean, yeah, the using the control stick, you know, holding the Joy Cons normally, that's fine. You know, it, it's good enough. But you guys know me, you know, in terms of my gaming preferences. If 2D games are important to you and you really like 2D platformers, you're going to want to invest in a Switch Pro Controller. Like, I'm telling you right now, um, I was going to buy a Switch Pro Controller at launch. I'm actually not now because I found that playing uh, Breath of the Wild with the Joy-Con grip is actually really nice, and I really enjoy that. However, I will be buying a Switch Pro Controller the very same day, whatever, you know, the, the, the same day I get a 2D, my first 2D game on the Switch, which will probably be Shovel Knight. But, um, yeah, just, just for you 2D aficionados out there, do know that you're probably going to want to invest in a Switch Pro Controller when 2D games start coming out on the Switch. Like, for example, I can't even imagine trying to play Ultra Street Fighter 2 with the Joy-Con held sideways. It's just no way. So that's how I feel about the Joy-Cons. Really cool controllers, just not well suited for 2D games, but great otherwise. I do want to stress that the Switch in general is absolutely too big for your pocket. I know there's some of you out there still thinking maybe you can carry the Switch with you in your pocket, not going to happen. It's just too big. I mean, it's, it's small enough to still be a portable, but it's not the kind of portable that you're going to be holding in your pocket. It's just not going to fit. Even if you disconnect the Joy-Cons, I see it being probably... I just don't see it happening. Maybe a very tight fit in some larger pockets, but just in general, know that if you want... If you're going to invest in a Switch and you're going to want to take it with you outside your home, you're going to want to buy or, you know, pick up a Switch uh, carrying case. It's just not the kind of thing... That you, that you can fit into your pocket, nor is it the kind of thing that you're going to want to put, just like throw into your bag or your purse where keys and other things can mess up that screen. Because the screen is actually my next point, and the screen is gorgeous. This is not, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very un-Nintendo-like screen uh, in the sense that it is gorgeous, and it's a, it's a multi-touch, capacitive touch screen, 720p, the colors really pop, like it, it's a really good-looking screen. So, you know, if you're a longtime Nintendo fan and you're used to Nintendo's really low res, resistive touchscreens on the Wii U gamepad or the 3DS touchscreen, don't even, there's no comparison. Like, don't even think that the Switch screen is anywhere close to that kind of quality. It's much, much better. This is a proper high resolution screen on a portable, and it looks great. So, kudos to Nintendo for designing a piece of hardware that is very un Nintendo like in the sense that it's. Less, it looks, it looks and feels less like a toy and more like a piece of technology, and it's very sleek in that sense. So, um, yeah, every single game I've seen on the Switch's screen playing in portable mode looks fantastic. Zelda looks great, Shovel Knight looks great, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe looked amazing. Really, and, and I've said this in prior previews, but really the big proof of concept moment for me originally happened at that New York event when I was playing Mario Kart 8 in tabletop mode, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in tabletop mode, and I just, I realized, man, I'm playing 
a game that looks as beautiful as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does on a portable. And that's crazy. Like, that's... It's, it's really, this is a really high-powered little console for what it's trying to do. So, anyway, the screen's great. A question I see asked very often, even now, is, um, are the triggers analog or digital? And I can tell you, and I, we've, we've said this a few times now, but the triggers are all digital on both the Switch itself and on the Switch Pro Controller. So, I don't know, um, assuming the rumors of the GameCube Virtual Console that come true, if that happens, I'm not really sure how they're going to emulate the GameCube controller's analog triggers, other than asking you to just play on a GameCube controller via the, assumedly, the Wii U game, uh, GameCube controller adapter. So the jury's still out on how that's all going to work out, but at least so far, the triggers are all digital, not analog, and which means they are zero or one, on or off. There isn't, you, you know, you don't press them a little bit to get a little bit of a response or further down to get more of a response. They are literally, you're pressing them or you're not. So I want to make that clear. And really, God, I think that's kind of all my major points that I wanted to hit. Uh, really, I just, I'm really impressed by how versatile the thing is. I'm really looking forward to my first, like, long-distance flight after I get my Switch because I'm really looking forward to actually trying that kind of, you know, airplane table, airplane tray top, uh, tabletop mode but for myself because really the first time you use the kickstand and you try tabletop mode and you realize that your, your hands are basically free roaming. You can move your hands however you want. You can hold the Joy-Cons however you want. It's very freeing, and, and it lets you really play in whatever position is most comfortable for you. And we haven't quite ever had a video game console that allows you to do that. So really, you know, if, if you're not... Obviously, the Switch is going to be, you know, less powerful graphically compared to the PS4 Pro and Xbox One. But, you know, it's, not, it's important not to just focus on that because I'm telling you, having played it now... When you're actually playing it and you realize all the things the Switch can do that the PS4 and Xbox One, as traditional consoles, can't do, the concept kind of sells itself. And, of course, it's really going to be incumbent upon Nintendo to fill out that game library and, and make the games on the Switch worth it playing, or worth playing. But, honestly, like, don't even let the lack of, or the relative lack of power bother you, because all the things you can do with the, with the Switch in terms of different controller setups and playing how you want and taking it on the go, it makes that trade-off in power worth it. And uh, just really, it's just not something you can quite totally see how cool it is until you've played it yourself. So you'll have to take my word on that for now. But I think that's really everything, all the major points I wanted to cover about my time playing the Switch, both at the New York Hands-On event and at Yacht Club Games more recently. So thank you guys for watching. Enjoy those video or enjoy the uh, images and the footage going around. But that's about it for now. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, as always. And if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media. As always, you can find all the links you need in the video description below. Otherwise, keep it on Game Explained for much more on the Nintendo Switch and all things gaming. Until next time, guys. Bye.